In this video we are talking about volcanoes. How are volcanoes formed? History of volcanoes in the world. The study of volcanoes. Types of volcanoes. The main parts of volcanoes. Question number 1. What is a volcano? A volcano is a rupture in the Earth's crust that lets gases, debris and molten rocks escape from a magma chamber inside the Earth's surface. During volcanic activities, debris and lava can flow at a velocity of up to 100 miles per hour, demolishing everything in their way. Volcanic ashes can spread across hundreds of kilometers and can inflict fatal health problems. Question number 2. Where did the term volcano come from? The term volcano is derived from the word volcano. The word volcano comes from the Latin word Vulcan. Vulcan is the ancient Roman god of fire. Question number three. What is the study of volcanoes called? The answer is volcanology. Volcanology is the study of volcanoes, lava, magma, and related geological, geophysical and geochemical phenomena. A volcanologist is a person who studies the formation of volcanoes, and their current and historic eruptions. Volcanologists frequently visit volcanoes, especially active ones, to observe volcanic eruptions, collect eruptive products including tephra, rock and lava samples. One major focus of inquiry is the prediction of eruptions, there is currently no accurate way to do this, but predicting eruptions, like predicting earthquakes, could save many lives. Question number 4. What causes the occurrences of volcanoes? The rigid lithosphere is divided into 16 larger and numerous smaller plates, according to plate tectonics theory. All of these plates are in slow motion. Volcanoes generally exist where tectonic plates are converging or diverging. The majority of them are found underwater. In the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, volcanoes were formed from diverging tectonic plates. On the other hand, volcanoes in the Pacific Ring of Fire were formed by converging tectonic plates. They can also be created from where there is thinning and stretching of the crust plates. Two such examples are the Rio Grande Rift and the East African Rift. Volcanoes usually do not exist where two tectonic plates slip past one another. Question number 5. What are the three types of volcano eruptions? The answer is hydrothermal eruption, phreatic eruption, and phreatomagmatic eruption. The style of eruption depends on a number of factors, including the magma chemistry and content, temperature, viscosity, volume and how much water and gas is in it. The presence of groundwater, and the plumbing of the volcano. For information on volcanic hazards which can be produced by our volcanoes. Hydrothermal eruption. An eruption driven by the heat in a hydrothermal system. Hydrothermal eruptions pulverize surrounding rocks and can produce ash, but do not include magma. These are typically very small eruptions. Phreatic eruption. An eruption driven by the heat from magma interacting with water. The water can be from groundwater, hydrothermal systems, surface runoff, a lake or the sea. Phreatic eruptions pulverize surrounding rocks and can produce ash, but do not include new magma. Phreatomagmatic eruption. An eruption resulting from the interaction of new magma or lava with water can be very explosive. The water can be from groundwater, hydrothermal systems, surface runoff, a lake or the sea. Question number 6. What are the classification of volcanoes? The answer is active, dormant and extinct. An active volcano is one which has recently erupted and there is a possibility that it may erupt soon again. A dormant volcano is one that has not erupted in a long time but there is a possibility it can erupt in the future. 
An extinct volcano is one which has erupted thousands of years ago and there's no possibility of an eruption. Question number seven. What are the parts of a volcano? Those are magma, vent, lava flow, volcanic bombs, lava dome, eruption column, eruption cloud, tephra, acid rain, pyroclastic flow, laha, fumaroles, and crack. Magma. When rocks become so hot, they can become a substance called magma. It collects in magma chambers on average 1 to 10 kilometers below the surface. Vent. Magma is lighter than the solid rock around it, so it rises. Eventually, some of the magma pushes through vents creating a volcanic eruption. Lava flow. Magma that erupts is called lava. If magma is thin and runny, gases can escape easily from it. When this type of magma erupts, lava flows outside the volcano. Lava flows are the molten rock that oozes onto the Earth's surface after a volcano eruption. Volcanic bombs. These molten rocks are thrown out from a volcano and are at least 66 mm in size. On exit, they cool down and become extrusive igneous rocks. Lava Dome When lava is too thick and sticky, it piles up around the vent and forms a dome. These circular mounds protrude from volcanoes because of the slow release of viscous lava. Eruption Column These clouds of heated ash and tephra are released from a vent during an explosive volcanic eruption. Within an eruption column and cloud, highly charged particles can generate thunder and lightning. Eruption cloud. Ash falls back down like powdery snow. But it's snow that won't melt. These blankets of ash suffocate plants and animals. The eruption cloud can extend up to 12 miles above a volcano. Then, it can reach thousands of kilometers in distant raining ash over regions. Tephra. If magma is thick and sticky, gases cannot escape easily. Pressure builds up until the gases escape violently and explode. This type of eruption magma blasts up into the air and breaks apart into pieces called tephra. Tephra can range in size from tiny particles of ash to house-sized boulders. Tephra destroys everything in its path. Acid rain. When sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide emitted from volcanoes reacts with water molecules in the air, it produces acid rain. Pyroclastic flow. This type of deadly flow contains fast-moving volcanic matter and hot gas. Pyroclastic flow moves away from a volcano and incorporates tephra. When lava domes collapse, it can create hot pyroclastic density currents. Laha. When hot volcanic material mixes with water from streams or snow and ice, laha mudflows form. Mudflows can bury entire communities like Mount St. Helens, Indiana, the 1980s. The positive outcome is that volcanic material breaks down and weather to form some of the most fertile soils. Fumaroles. Holes, cracks, or fissures are on the surface near volcanoes. They emit steam and volcanic gases, such as sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide. Fumaroles create pathways for rising heat, volcanic gas, and magma. Crack. Openings stemming down into the pool of magma. Cracks and fumaroles act like a window so scientists can get a glimpse of the gases inside volcanoes. Question number 8. Where do the majority of volcanoes exist? About 75% of the Earth's active volcanoes are located around the Ring of Fire. It is a horseshoe-shaped area that extends from the southern point of South America across North America's west coast, along the Bering Sea to Japan and ending at New Zealand. Question number 9. What are the dangerous consequences of volcanic eruptions? Volcanic explosions pose many hazards apart from lava flows. Massive eruptions can alter atmospheric temperature as sulfuric acid droplets and ash block the sun, which cool the troposphere. Throughout history, huge volcanic explosions have been accompanied by volcanic winters, which have paved the way for catastrophic famines. Volcanic eruptions are followed by pyroclastic flows. 
It is a mix of ash, high-speed toxic gases and avalanches of hot rocks. Likewise, volcanic mud flows known as lahars can be devastating. These fast-moving waves of debris and mud can flow down the flanks of a volcano, engulfing entire towns. Volcanic ash is another serious threat to nature. It consists of sharp bits of rocks and volcanic glass, smaller than 2 mm across. The ash generates as the gases in the rising magma enlarge, disintegrating the cooling rocks as they explode from the volcano's mouth. It causes breathing problems, and it is heavy and multiplies quickly. Removal of ash is a serious challenge post-eruption. Question number 10. Which was the most catastrophic volcanic eruption in recorded history? The most catastrophic volcanic activity in recorded history was the 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora in Indonesia. The explosion was one of the strongest ever recorded and created a crater 6.4 km across and more than 1.09 km deep. A superheated wave of hot gas and a shot 45 km into the sky, creating countless pyroclastic flows when it erupted. <laughs>